Welcome to What's Up in Wisconsin, and happy Juneteenth. Not sure if that's the right thing for white people to say today. Speaking of Juneteenth, for the first time in Wisconsin history, the Juneteenth flag is flying over the Capitol, which feels like a strong middle finger to the Vilas County lone Klansman who was spotted this week just drinking a beer and walking his dog. Safe bet his dog is his only black friend. The Democratic Party of Wisconsin held its virtual state convention last Friday, and it was, well, let's say it lacked the production value of the Disney Family sing-along. But like the Disney Family sing-along, some of it was cute, half the people I hadn't heard of, and there were some interesting performances. Wisconsin treasurer Sarah Gadluski used her adorable child chomping on a cheese head to distract us from the fact that there was no vodka at her Bloody Mary bar. Senator Buley tried to rally the troops with this culinary metaphor. This is no time for weenies. We need Wisconsin bratwurst. Turns out she was just reminding her husband he screwed up the grocery list. Out of Gamey County Executive Tom Nelson had a weird flex showing off how good a shape he's in by running through his entire county in two minutes without breaking a sweat. And we would know because purple silk hides nothing. And then while they tallied the delegate votes, there was a slideshow of when we were allowed near each other set to some soft EDM where the beat never dropped. <laughs> While you might have missed some of those gems, if you watched, you definitely didn't miss hearing how important Wisconsin is in this year's election. Wisconsin is an important battleground state for us. The eyes of the world are upon us in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a linchpin state. At a moment when what happens in Wisconsin will affect the course of human history. No pressure. While their phrasing may have come off as a little hyperbolic, if the presidential election is close in November, Wisconsin will likely be the deciding state. And considering how close Wisconsin elections typically are, your vote literally, not 16-year-old girl literally, actually literally, could make the difference. I'm going to refrain from using cliches like, this is the most important election of our lifetime. But I think it's worth explaining why Wisconsin and Wisconsinites are in such a unique position this year. The most obvious reason is the Electoral College. The only thing that matters in a presidential race is getting to 270 electoral votes. Each state has a set amount of electoral votes loosely based on their population. I say loosely because one electoral vote in Wyoming equals about 190,000 folks from Wyoming, while one electoral vote in Texas equals about 760,000 Texans. But I digress. And in 48 states, it's winner takes all. So it doesn't matter if 49.5% of people in that state voted for the person who loses, the candidate who wins gets all of that state's electoral votes, whether that's three or 55. So in states where the population is super majority one party, it's safe to assume that party's candidate is going to get all of those electoral votes, which leaves only a handful of states where there is not a dominant Republican or Democratic majority, AKA, Swing states. And not only is Wisconsin one of these swing states, in most scenarios, neither party can win without winning Wisconsin. But Wisconsin's not just your run-of-the-mill swing state, it's basically symmetrically split 50-50 between the two parties. It's as evenly split as when my mom would give my brother and me a treat to share, but said if I cut it, he got to choose which half he wanted, so I made sure it was perfectly cut in half. It's that even. Not only are the two parties equal in numbers, both parties are equally organized and fervent and use every previous election as motivation fodder for their base. Which is why every election here is so close. Three out of the last five presidential races in Wisconsin were determined by less than a percentage point. Basically, the daily attendance at Noah's Ark could make the difference in the election. And it's not just Madison and Milwaukee being blue and the rest of the state solid red. In 2016, almost half of our counties were decided by less than 3,000 votes. So despite your assumptions, you likely live in a more competitive area than you think. But to really throw a wrench in conventional wisdom, despite being such a polarized state, about 12% of people here split their ticket in 2018. That means more than one out of 10 people voted for both Tammy Baldwin and Scott Walker. Riddle me that. So the assumption is that it's those people who will decide which way Wisconsin falls. But that's discounting the amount of people who don't usually vote and might this year, or who will vote for the first time. Basically, no one knows what's going to happen here because everyone keeps being surprised after every Wisconsin election. So don't believe anyone who tells you which way it's going to go. They have no idea. This is all to say that you, as a Wisconsin resident, can do something pretty cool and unique just by voting. For example, before coming back, I live in a state where everyone knew which way their state would vote. Kind of taking the fun out of it. And I'll let you in on a little secret. They're jealous of you and the power of your vote. They want nothing to do with your Wisconsin winters, but that's a different topic. If you still don't care about voting, 
Honestly, I'm surprised you're still watching this video. But I will say this, voting is kind of like buying Packer shares. Hard to prove how much impact your contribution actually made, but doesn't it feel that much better knowing you played a small part when your team wins?